Hey, folks. Today, we're diving deep into Israel, its history, its role in the grand plan of things according to the big guy upstairs, and whether the buzz around recent events in Israel means we're hitting the end times. Buckle up because this ride's gonna be a thrilling one. Let's talk about why all eyes are on Israel lately. The Bible's pretty explicit about Israel being the linchpin in God's big plan. So, I'm breaking down seven key things you should know about Israel's role in the end times. Before we begin I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. If you are not subscribed I recommend you to subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any video that are uploaded every day. Alright, let's keep rolling. First off, let's rewind a bit and check out Israel's history, specifically what went down with the whole scattering of Israel saga. Picture this. God set up Israel to be a unified powerhouse under a single ruler back in the day. But, as humans tend to do, they went off the rails with disobedience, immorality, idol worship, and trampling on the less fortunate. God was like, guys, if you go down this road, expect to be scattered worldwide. He wasn't kidding. Circa way back in Deuteronomy chapter 4, God, through Moses, warned the people, no idols, folks. That's a one-way ticket to my wrath. But, alas, they didn't heed the warning. Cue the scattering, Assyrians barging in around 722 BC, shipping folks out to places like Assyria. Then, in 586 BC, the Babylonian crew rolled in, snatched up folks from Jerusalem, and carted them off to Babylon. That's like spreading butter on toast, but with people across the globe. Fast forward through Persian and Hellenistic periods, and by 70 AD, the Jewish temple was toast, more lives lost, some sold into slavery, others running for their lives. Then, the 20th century dropped the Holocaust bomb, wiping out six million lives and scattering even more. It's been a roller coaster for Israel, bouncing around like a pinball machine throughout history. But wait, there's more. Now, let's move on to the regathering of Israel, which is a crucial part of this story. Despite all the scattering, there's this fascinating prophecy about Israel being gathered back together. Imagine scattering puzzle pieces, then finding and putting them back together, that's the regathering of Israel. So, how did this happen? Stay tuned, folks. I'll break it down for you in just a bit. Alright, on to stage 2 of God's Israel plan, the physical restoration. If stage one was the scattering, consider this the putting the pieces back together phase. The Old Testament sprinkled with promises from God about restoring Israel to its land. Check out Ezekiel 11 verse 17, I, the big boss upstairs, will gather you back from the scattered spots and plop you back in Israel. Ezekiel 36 verse 24 echoes this vibe, with a, pack your bags, folks, you're coming home. Amos 9 verses 14 to 15 paints a vivid picture, I'm bringing back the exiled crew from far-flung places. They'll rebuild, plant, feast, and chill. And guess what? They're staying put this time. No more uprooting. I promise, says the Lord. But hold up. That last bit, never again be uprooted from the land I've given them, highlights something key, it hasn't happened yet. 
Despite Israel's wild, scattered past, these promises of restoration are like a beacon of hope. But wait, there's more to this tale. Let's get into the nitty-gritty of these stages in God's game plan for Israel. Stage 2? The Physical Restoration Gig Imagine this, Israel, scattered all over, facing the seemingly impossible task of becoming a nation again, especially after the gut-wrenching Holocaust. But guess what rocked the world on May 14, 1948? The Jewish nation got back on the map. That day? A milestone in history. Before that, the brainy Bible scholars were scratching their heads, wondering how God would keep his word about restoring Israel when they weren't even a nation. But bam! 1948 changed the game. Now, let's zoom to stage 3, Wars and Persecution. Modern-day Israel's no stranger to conflicts. Zechariah 12 verses 2 to 3 predicted this, calling Jerusalem an immovable rock. God foresaw the punches coming their way, but also assured that Israel, protected by divine forces, would stand strong even when armies came knocking. But hold your horses. Jesus had a little something to say about not freaking out at the first sight of conflicts. Matthew 24 rings a bell? He warned, hey folks, wars will pop up, but don't hit the panic button. Chill, it's not the end just yet. Since Israel's rebirth in 48, they've had their fair share of tussles, from the Arab-Israeli war to the recent conflicts in 2021 and 2023. Wars? Yep. Part of the plan, but not the final whistle. Stage 4? Enter the Antichrist and the Temple Dilemma during the Seven-Year Tribulation. Picture this, a smooth-talking Antichrist brokering a peace deal with Israel. They're thinking, hey, this dude's got our back. But halfway through, plot twist. He turns the tables, stops the sacrifices, and throws the nation into chaos. The Antichrist's grand finale? Placing some unholy object in God's house, causing major trouble. Stage 5's a doozy, persecution of Israel during the tribulation. Jesus laid it out in Matthew 24, warning about the Antichrist's dirty tricks. He'd pull a stunt in the holy place, and Jesus was spot on. His head's up? Like a survival guide for those living through that chaotic time. Think of it as a, hey, folks, you might want to brace yourselves, warning in the Bible. These stages? They're like puzzle pieces fitting into this massive prophetic picture God's painting. And guess who's the focal point in all this? Israel? Their past, present, and future are all tangled up in this divine storyline. Crazy, huh? But wait, there's more to unravel. Let's unpack what Jesus had to say to those potentially facing tribulation. Picture this scenario, a future you, reading this during a chaotic time, streaming events happening in real time. Jesus goes, pay attention, folks. When you see something off in the temple, a sign of trouble brewing, you better bolt. This ain't gonna be your average tough time, it'll be history's craziest. Pregnant ladies, new moms? It's gonna be rough. Pray your escape ain't in winter or on the Sabbath. Jesus, ahead of the game, drops these hints to help those in the tribulation escape persecution. See, amidst the chaos and extreme hardship, there's a silver lining. 
This harsh persecution leads many in Israel to hit pause, reevaluate, and turn to Christ. God's plan comes full circle, not just physically restoring Israel but spiritually too. Number 6 in God's Israel plan? Spiritual Restoration Check Zechariah 12 verse 10, mind-blowing prophecy, right? Zechariah predicts the Savior, centuries before Jesus' birth, even describing his piercing. Then, Jeremiah 24 verse 7 jumps in, promising hearts recognizing God, turning back wholeheartedly. Ezekiel 36 paints this beautiful picture of cleansing, a fresh start for Israel, a new heart, and God's Spirit within them. It's like a heartwarming reunion, God drawing Israel back in, recognizing Jesus as their Savior. The cherry on top? During this tribulation chaos, the Bible forecasts Israel becoming the main evangelists, spreading the word of Jesus. Picture Revelation 7 marking 144,000 Jewish evangelists, supernaturally protected by God to spread the gospel far and wide. These evangelists are critical players in God's plan, sealing them for a mission amidst the chaos, protecting them from harm. God's not done there. Revelation 7 details a pause on further judgment until these evangelists are sealed and ready for their divine mission. This ain't just a story about Israel's trials, it's about redemption, restoration, and God's ultimate plan coming to life. So, we've journeyed through God's intricate plan for Israel, from their scattered history to their spiritual rebirth all playing out amidst chaos and divine intervention. But stay tuned, cause there's more to this divine plotline. In the last stage of God's plan for Israel, we're talking serious divine protection. This climax is the Battle of Armageddon. The Hebrew term Ohar Megiddo means Mount of Mago, right in Israel. And when things come to a head, God's stepping in. Picture it, the big showdown is set in Israel, the epicenter of all prophecy. Revelation talks about these demonic forces gathering for a showdown, but here's the kicker, God's got this in the bag. It's practically a done deal. Now, let's hit the bonus round, the reign and rule of Christ in Israel. Get this, when Jesus returns, his feet are touching down on the Mount of Olives in Israel. Zechariah drops the bomb about Jesus landing on the Mount of Olives, which is pretty much confirmed in Acts, telling us he'll return just as he ascended. Once that's all said and done, the beast, the Antichrist, and the false prophet? Toast. They're getting the eternal sizzle in the lake of fire. And here's where it all wraps up, the 1,000-year millennial reign. This is when Israel gets that divine makeover. Jerusalem's the hot seat where Jesus sets up camp. Picture it as a worldwide pilgrimage, everyone honoring the Lord in Jerusalem. It's Jesus HQ, his reign as King of Kings. Even Zechariah's talking about it, how Jerusalem becomes a safe haven, and anyone who skips the party misses out. So, bottom line, Israel's got a special place in this grand divine plan. It's like the ultimate spotlight in history and prophecy. If you're curious about what happens after this 1,000-year shindig, check out my video on New Jerusalem, the heavenly capital in store for us. That's where the eternal party's at. Hope this gave you a solid overview of God's game plan for Israel in the big biblical narrative. Catch you in the next video. Peace out. 
If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.